Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on the whole farm. So it's the whole food forest, 10 acre food forest monthly farm update. I do these monthly farm updates. I've been doing them for the past, this will be the 13th month. And I'm back here by my miniature zebu uh, barn. I have to clean this, the uh, stalls and the miniature zebu uh stuff that i clean out every morning the the coastal bermuda hay and uh the manure and urine with it is what i apply daily there's the cows heading out to a new pasture we rotationally graze the cows and i put them on a new pa <coughs> pasture every week I love them. I love the miniature zebus. But I was just back here with these mangoes. This is a fruit punch mango. This is a uh, sweet tart mango. And that's a Venus mango. There's a lychee that's in bloom. There's a lychee that's not blooming, but I'm sure it's going to. Uh, but I was looking at this uh, achachiro right there in the center. Can you see it? That's a Primo Selecto seed grown achachiro planted in full sun. We don't water anything here. We naturally farm everything. Uh, we just let the rain provide water. Even when I plant plants, I don't water them in. I never have. Uh, mostly because we didn't have a well when we first started and I wanted to plant these plants. So here goes the tour. The lychees, a lot of them are in bloom or starting to bloom like this one. And uh, I imagine this will give us a nice crop this year. It's been very wet. This is a Venus mango. Most of our mangoes are like doing a full bloom. Uh, we don't have uh, pa uh, fungal issues and pest issues and disease issues because we focus on soil health. So I've been focusing on soil. This lychee is just now starting to bloom. Um, they're all grafted, mauritius or <sighs> there's another variety. I can't think of mauritius or UQ. Anyway, it's a coconut cream mango. Um, so we focus on soil health and uh, we just apply a uh, small micro dose of uh, daily inputs in the form of uh, what we clean out of our barn. So basically I call it compost because when we're biodynamic uh, uh, certified, we aren't anymore. Um, this is the backside of that coconut cream mango. This is a buttercream mango. Um, I called it compost, but it's really, I leave on the ground. Uh, I start seeds in it, some seeds. This is a sugarloaf mango. That's a jackfruit that's fruiting, a uh, seedling tree. That's a, a super julie tree that's fruiting or flowering. All this rain we've been getting, um, that's like the biggest problem with mangoes, heavy rain uh, when they're, they're really, long, young, really young. This is a Florigon mango. It's pretty much in full shade. It has fruit on it. It's like the only four Florigon mango around here. So our bananas, we have, uh, I'm up to 420 bananas. I timed, I'm t I want to get up to 500 by February 20th. I, I figure it'd take eight days to get up to uh, 500. So I just have to do them every other day. Uh, these are Florigon mangoes that aren't blooming, but they're pushing. And this is a Malika mango that's, actually this is a Malika and that is a Florigon. They're all pushing. I can see uh, they're starting. And uh, some of our Florigans are fruiting, flowering, and some aren't. This is a Namdak Mai that hasn't even started, which is kind of bizarre. Namdak Mai has been one of those mangoes that has produced uh, three crops for us in one season, or, you know, in one, one year. We're getting like so many banana racks. I've had bananas every day basically uh, since the first of the year. And it took us to get up to 400 bananas before that actually started happening. So they do very well and we don't really have to worry about uh, applying nutrients to them like they suggest. And um, uh, our, our nitrogen that we apply here in the form of uh, compost or manure rather is, uh, only equates to, this is a buttercream mango that's blooming, and only equates to, uh, these are Rolinia trees that are quite large. 
This is the first year they have not lost all their leaves in the winter. So I think this is going to be the year uh, that they fruit. We have uh, flowers on them right now. So uh, they've never done that in the winter. So I'm pretty sure that this is their year. It's taken a while, dry farm Rolinia, because they're very water dependent. And um, so it's taken us me to get up to 400 bananas before we had uh, banana fruit every day pretty much year round. Uh, so far it's in 2024 that's been the case. So along this driveway I've planted uh, ginger and in between the ginger I planted sugar apple trees. Uh, at end of every ginger I planted mangoes and at every uh, sugar apple I planted uh, seeds of uh, achachiro on both sides, uh, except I didn't do the mangoes on this side. There are mangoes over there, but I didn't do a row of them like I did along here. And the achachiro is doing good, and the mangoes are starting to push, all these mangoes. The neighbors had sprayed glyphosate there, which affected our mango production one year. Then I buried the biodynamic horn in the ground along here, like 20 of them. Uh, and then we got fruit the next year. But some of our mangoes along here have been affected by it. There's a little achichero. And I put a daily manure. Uh, you can uh, use manure for an input to grow uh, food crops, but you have to wait 120 days after its application before you harvest fruit for uh, uh, human consumption. So there's a little achichero. The sugar apples inland Florida lose all their leaves in the winter, so it's not anything to worry about. That's happened every year. Some people get freaked out by their sugar apples uh, losing their leaves, but it had some fruit on it that, uh, late season fruit that I just forgot to check. And the achachiros are looking great. Pretty big for only a year old. So, but some mangoes did get affected by the glyphosate, and you can see that the ginger on this side isn't as big as the ginger on this side. That's because of the, probably the spraying of the glyphosate and the disconnection of the uh, underground fungal organism uh, from this side is uh, disconnected because of this paved road here. Uh, so it's not connected to the whole system. And then there's a road on the other side. The neighbors spray glyphosate into the waterway there because that's what they do in this part of Florida. They just don't believe that um, glyphosate is... Uh, a pollutant for some reason. Uh, I, you know, I just, I don't get it, but that's, that's the way it is. I have given up trying to figure out what's going on, but uh, <laughs> it's a known pollutant and known toxicant. And I was doing a, look at the fungi grows in our daily manure. I was doing a, uh, so this side is disconnected. These trees were planted the same time. So this foxtail palm is like half the size of this. They were the same size when I planted them. There were two in that hole. So they don't compete with each other. The two actually helped each other. And because it's connected to the whole system, they are a lot bigger. So uh, twice the size. So the whole fallacy that plants compete is just crazy. Um, so I was, you know, uh, do it looking uh, you know one good thing about when I do my monthly farm report is I really don't have to do a lot of thinking while I do it I just have to look at stuff these are my roses I love uh, antique roses that's an antique tea nonset uh, blooms year round it has nice hips this is a a climbing uh, antique is it a tea called Sambrui I think it's a tea uh, not a tea hybrid but a antique tea rose uh, anyway, this is the front, and I have a row of sugar apples, and then the ginger, and then I have my uh, main area of bananas in here, and that's where I'm going to go. <clears throat> along the on along US 12, so this is a little uh, a little uh, egg fruit seedling. So, but I did some reading on uh, nitrogen fertilizers because there's so much uh, variation in what. Uh, different like ag schools like University of Florida recommend, recommends to apply nitrogen. I'm not going to get into it, but it's some ridiculous amount for each banana in home use for home garden. And uh, it's they're all recommending salt-based nitrogen. And we have a major nutrient problem 
uh, pollution problem in Florida caused by agricultural chemical runoff and home use chemicals are agricultural uh, runoff. And they've shown that nitrogen from uh, synthetic sources, so uh, industrially, uh, industrial uh, pollutants converted to uh, nitrogen agricultural chemicals, ammonia, um, uh, is a different form of nitrogen than the nitrogen you get from nitrogen fixation or from compost or um, uh, compost or manure. So the compost or manure is like N3, N4 nitrogen and the, comp and the nitrogen from uh, farm chemicals is N1. So N1 doesn't have the amino acids in it that helped synthesize, uh, 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 reduce uh, nutrients uh, for plant uh, uh, growth and plant abiotic stress defenses. You don't get those from the, uh, the salt-based fertilizers, but you get them, the amino acids, from the uh, compost and the, and the, uh, the manure. So the stuff's looking good in here. I have some uh, mangoes that had froze. They're getting quite large, but we had like 25 of our grafted mango trees got froze back. I don't include that in the total of our 250 mango trees we have planted here. And they're starting to uh, flower, these mango trees that did not freeze. Uh, this one is the orange sherbet. It's one of my favorite uh, mangoes, definitely my favorite dwarf mango tree. Uh, by far it's in my top 10 mangoes of all time uh, possibly sometimes in the top five uh this is a super julie tree it's starting to push this is going to be a good mango year as long as the stuff doesn't get knocked off from too much rain the rain has been just outrageous so the nitrogen from chemicals uh creates uh nitrates in food and nitrates in food can be a good thing but you know, from the chemical sources uh too much too much organic nitrogen is too much um so but when you're getting too much nitrogen in your food you're going to have a higher incidence of cancer they've, sh they've shown and um causes a lot of uh metabolic problems in children so um, uh, yeah, it's some nitrates is good for the production of nitrate, nitrate oxide in our blood and for health, but uh, heart health especially, but it's for gum health, it's for a lot of things. But when it's in the form of a pollutant and it's, you don't have the amino acids with the nitrogen source, uh, then it's, it's probably not very healthy for you. And they've shown that, uh, hydroponically grown lettuce, especially, or, you know, leafy greens, uh, contain too much nitrates. And, um, we have a human health, uh, crisis going on in the U S caused by our agricultural systems. And we also have a pollution problem in Florida caused by our agricultural systems. Uh, human health, animal health, uh, plant health, and soil health is all one health. So the exposome you create is what dictates the health of your family. We focus on building my, uh, microbial rich soils that have a high uh, preponderance of fungal uh, microorganisms in them. And the way to do that is with a low nitrogen, so something below 5% um, nitrogen and uh, in, in low amounts. So uh, a lot of these, I mentioned that the uh, recommendations, the, these are the jackfruits, jackfruits that are fruiting and uh, black sapote and uh, here's a super julie tree. And there's a, a Inga cinnamonia, you know, a nitrogen fixer. <clears throat> there's a couple of mangoes over there, Floragan and Knock by, and that's a custard apple tree. Everything grows together perfectly. So 
uh, the nitrogen recommendations by the uh, Biodynamic Association. We are no longer biodynamic certified. We were at one point, but it was too stressful for me. I do these videos. People can tell what I do. I feel that's certification enough doing a video every other day. What more do you need? Anyway, um, there's a, a mango that's in full, uh, basically almost full, all shade all the time, and it actually has fruit on it. So. Um, Anyway, then these, this is a male uh, Garcinia hombromiana tree that's starting to flower. Uh, it's got little flowers starting. Uh, this will be in full bloom uh, soon. And uh, the trees are just amazing. They smell so good, even the male trees. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm gonna go around this way. The black sapote, this is a, a seedling uh, jackfruit. So the Biodynamic Association says that you can apply up to 85 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Well, we're only produce we when we were biodynamic certified, and you know a lot of people think that you need to apply more nitrogen in order to get plant growth. Um, but the form of nitrogen does matter. At what what how your plant is going to perform. So if you're applying nitrogen in a synthetic form from uh, ammonia fertilizers, uh, from industrial sources. This jackfruit is a seedling jackfruit. I can see uh, fruit on it um, forming right there. Uh, this is a grafted jackfruit tree that's fruiting. It's a little seedling tree. It's way too small to have flowers on it, tiny. So the uh, form of nitrogen uh, dictates the uh, health outcome of your tree and your soil. So when you're applying salt-based fertilizers, your soil uh, is less, the tree uh, soil uh, microorganism symbiosis is less likely to happen than if you're applying uh, organic nitrogen fertilizers or getting uh, nitrogen fixation through biology uh, with the addition of uh, nitrogen fixing plants, building a home for the, the biology to live and the living roots. There's a lot of little things in here. There's a Luke's Garcinia. There's a little citrus here. One of our Miko lemons. We don't have graining issues. And the graining issues is because the mitochondria DNA, the mitochondria has been damaged. On uh, the the cells have been damaged on the citrus. Uh, it's got a pollutants from agrochemicals in the cells, so it's mutated, and the the plant can't. Um, the plant can't uh, elicit immune response because of the uh, farm uh, chemicals you're using uh, don't uh, promote or they kill uh, microbial life, which is going to provide the, the bacteria needed to uh, create the enzymes that will uh, enable the plant to uh, create phytochemicals to ward off uh, the insect that causes greening, though greening is now uh there's a cashew trees we're going to be a major cashew farm these are all from our cashew tree that fruits uh more than 200 fruit this year uh all without water all without doing pretty much anything to it uh, um so the citrus is uh <clears throat> it's got a disease that's a chronic disease for uh greening um that isn't caused by insects because of the uh the heritable traits that uh, the mutated genes from pollution caused in their citrus. So they're unable to even uh, overcome greening. So they put them in tents. And citrus isn't a very valuable crop. And pe people are aware that Florida citrus is a dangerous product. Uh, and it's not organic, the, or non organic type it is full of all kinds of. Uh, farm chemicals that have, have, have been shown to cause cognitive decline, and yet you can plant a better crop and you don't even have to do that. So they can plant mangoes, uh, and they put all that money into those plastic tents on their young trees. They can put the plastic tents over the mangoes, though adding plastic to your system is creating a, a super fun site out of your farm system. So uh, pl adding plastic to soils like they do in organic farming, we are not organic certified anymore, but I believe in organic farm practices, which is what we employ here. And um, But adding plastic mulch is severely 
damaging the health of your soil. And uh, the, uh, most organic farmers use this is a, a uh, <clears throat> that's a, uh, a, uh, a star fruit tree. So the, the plastic, when you put it on the soil, it, it degrades quickly and nanoparticles of plastic, microplastics, go into the soil that uh, get smaller and smaller and they're full of uh, forever chemicals and uh, heavy, they attract heavy metals. So they're full of pollutants that get uptaken by the plant, especially when you're using salt-based fertilizers because there's no biocontrols which the fungal can provide in the root zone of the plant. But if it's surrounded by plastic, even in organic systems, that degrades the microbial life in your soil. So it's like uh, the whole uh, practice of using plastics isn't even an organic concept. It's a totally ignorant way to grow. And I just can't believe that any organic farmer would uh, move make the decision to put plastic mulch down on their soil. It's just, it's wrong and nobody points it out. Uh, I think I'm the only one that does that. And it's just wrong. It is wrong. And they know that. You see any of the studies they finally found on water, on bottled water, there's all the kinds of plastics in it. Plastics is what's gonna take us out. They figure we breathe a, a credit card of plastic in a week. <sighs> just breathe in the air. So if you're putting it in the soil too, in the form of plastic mulch, or you're growing stuff in plastic pots, or you're growing stuff in plastic pots in the greenhouse, and you're using water soluble fertilizers, and you don't have uh, biological controls that can alleviate the uptake of plastics and, and toxins in, there's, in your plant, like uh, uh, microbial life can, like fungi can, then you're going to uh, consume that when you eat the food. A nitrogen nitrate fixed a nitrogen nitrate bad nitrate uh, that is uh, human health detrimental so it's like oh my god we need, we need to get more smart this is an ingus spectabilis tree that's like blooming and this tree all my ingus spectabilis but one are the same age and they're all varying sizes and it's a, it's a nice looking tree. Here's a, a cacao, Trinitora cacao. We grow three types of cacao. Uh, I, I uh, don't believe that the cacao can be bred to be more cold tolerant, but I do believe that you can build a soil that's more, uh, uh, that can provide an abiotic uh, stress response to cold weather and um, you can't do it if you're using uh, nitrogen uh, salt-based fertilizer, synthetic nitrogen. This is a, uh, a uh, male Humbromiana tree that has the red flowers starting to bloom. Um, I guess it's a Humbromiana. And then I have a bunch of little uh, Garcinias down here. We grow about 15 different types of Garcinias. Got about 500 Achachiro trees and then I have probably about 30 uh, Garcinia madruna trees, and then I have a bunch of Garcinia macrophylla, and I have a bunch of different types of Garcinia, or different Garcinia dulcis trees from different sources. And here's a Acha Chiro tree that's getting of size. It's been very wet. I can't believe I'm up to 420 um, bananas. I can't help myself. I wanna get up to 800 by this time next year. This is a Garcinia brasiliensis tree with fruit on it. It's a lemon drop mangosteen, one of the many lemon type dra lemon drop mangosteen species there are. Uh, Garcinia gardneriana, this is one of them. It's a lemon drop mangosteen. Uh, I think that's the one Adam calls improved uh, lemon drop mangosteen. That's just a name he made up to sell more plants. Um, and then there's a... Uh, uh, Garcinia intermedia, which is also a lemon drop mangosteen. I put Garcinia madruno in the lemon drop mangosteen category. Uh, just because it's just, I mean, that's what I think it is. I mean, it just tastes like a lemon. It's a Garcinia humbromiana female 
uh, flower and it has fruit on it and it doesn't start that way. So it, I, it has to be self-fertile. This tree is starting to give, give me a big bloom. It did not bloom last year. This is uh, would be our seventh species of Garcinia to hold fruit to maturity. Uh, the Garcinia humbromiana. Uh, this is a, a, a black sapote growing with a nitrogen fixing tree that's our smallest and slowest growing uh, black sapote tree. This was a very compacted area, so that that is why. Uh, compaction, plants can't overcome compaction very easily. One of the ways that I do it is by uh, planting lots of bananas in, in the system. Uh, there's a cashew. There's a cashew. We have cashews everywhere. There's a little sapodilla in there. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, there's another cashew over here somewhere, but I don't see it now. Now the rabbits don't seem to get the cashews. I wonder if they got that one because I don't see it, but I'm sure it's in there. So I have to plant bananas all size. This is a little tiny one I just did. This is a bigger one I just did like two days ago or four days ago. There's a, a world's best uh, mulberry. And then here's black sapote. Here's a, a mango that actually froze, but it's getting ready to bloom. And then there's a mango that froze. It's getting ready to bloom. Or no, it's not getting ready to bloom. Here's a, a very nice size achachiro tree. That's a big uh, guava tree over there. We have about 10 different types of guavas. Uh, mostly I got from my friend Frank. We have one big fruiting tree. It's a Ruby Supreme. Here's a, a Cherry of the Rio Grande, a black version. It's quite delicious fruit. I love the, that tree. Here's a Santal tree. It's our smallest Santal. It got affected by the uh, drought two years ago. Here's a Miko lemon. We have about 13 types of citrus. Here's a hybrid hybrid lemon drop mangosteen uh, with varying sizes of leaves on it, different types of leaves. Uh, it's just, I couldn't figure out what this tree was. It has intermediate leaves. It has a achichiro type leaves. It has everything, but it has a garden, uh, gardeniana, Garcinia gardeniana type fruit. There's the achichiro, um, has a, a gardeniana type fruit, but it's sweet. Um, look at all these fungi in here. So I've got all kinds of little stuff in here. I have the uh, Puteria torta, uh, glabra, to, uh, put, Puteria glabra torta in here. And it's hanging on to this last leaf. This is one I just planted that was kind of yellowy when I put it here. And it's gonna make it, it's still green. It hasn't lost that last leaf. It's not cold sensitive. It's just, that was a very unhealthy plant when I put it in the ground. And it's just trying to uh, find its footing, but it's been there for a while. This is the black, uh, African locust bean. There's a, a uh, soursop that isn't cold sensitive for some reason. It's the soil. It's the, uh, the uh, epigenic effects that ha have uh, happened to our soil uh, because of our management practice that um, uh, when the soil forms aggregation, it has the uh, phytochemicals, the, the phenols and, and the stuff needed, the enzymes, the bacteria, and the DNA from uh, different trees that we grow here, uh, wrapped up with nitrogen fixing bacteria, pieces of fungi and um, uh, minerals. So when it rains, that soil solution uh, is able to move through the soil and uh, create uh, uh, health beneficial changes in the plants that I put into the soil. It's not the tree so much, uh, it's the soil. Because I have planted trees from, this is a sweet giant ubije, a gift from my friend Frank. Thank you, Frank and Annette. Um, it's not the tree so much because I do plant uh, I do buy industrial grown um, plants. I like Lara Farms plants. I have bought jabata cabas from uh, people, but jabata cabas, I believe, are uh, they're uh, they're much like the citrus. So they've damaged the mitochondria due to growing them in peat and uh, holly tone for so long that the 
the the source of the trees is uh, mutated in a non-beneficial way. So probably some wild caught seeds from Brazil would be a better benefit and grow seed grown so that somebody can develop uh, jabata cavas that aren't uh, akin to Florida citrus and are able to grow more naturally. I haven't experimented on jabata cavas because I, I, I just, I was able to taste them at Flying Fox Fruit more than 10 years ago and I just didn't like them. Uh, I focused more on achachiros, which is what that is and um, um, more dessert, dessert fruits. So I just didn't like the leathery uh, skin. I think they're gorgeous, beautiful trees. I understand why people want them. They're incredible looking. And, but the way people grow them in pots and um, uh, don't look at their, uh, their uh, conditions that they're exerting on the, uh, their growing conditions that they're exerting on the plants are creating, um, uh, plants that are, this is our rose apples, plants that are uh, mutated and unable to survive uh, natural growing conditions. So you have to constantly baby them and water them and keep them in a greenhouse or whatever. They can't handle uh, changes in the environment and they can't handle drought. And those are mutagenic changes that happens from years of being grown in black plastic pots and uh, being fed chemicals in uh, peat moss. That's why. Uh, so I have uh, different uh, aeroids and stuff in here. I'm obsessed with aeroids. This is the wampi, the one, the pink one. That's W-A-M-P-I-E. W-A-M-P-I-I uh, -I is from Australia and the W-A-M-P-I-E is from other parts of Asia. Um, uh, here's our bread, bread nut trees. Uh, they're doing okay. They didn't like the cold, but they look okay. The anthuriums and the rare aeroids are doing good. Um, no problems whatsoever. They like being in the ground. They don't seem to mind the you know, cold temperatures we get in the winter. This is how much rain we got. So we got like four inches yesterday, I guess. We have cacao that fruits. Um, I haven't been able to tell a difference between the Criollo, the Trinitoro, or the yellow ribbed, which is what this is. This is the second generation of yellow ribbed uh, cacao that we've grown naturally outside here in Florida. Uh, we have about 100 cacao trees. This is a Trinitoro tree. Uh, we are going to be a major uh, cacao farm, uh, naturally grown, and uh, to show people that you can grow cacao successfully commercially uh, in Florida, especially this far north without any uh, protection. Uh, now I'm moving on to doing durian, which is what that is. And there's another one right there. And there's one right here. They don't seem affected by the cold. Little coffee trees, same thing. Those were a gift from my friends Scott and Bill. Uh, have cacao that grow naturally. So I got some seeds of some some uh, bergamot citrus. And I, I wanted to grow bergamot citrus because it's a... Uh, it lowers cholesterol and uh, been shown to lower cholesterol. I guess they've also used it in Italy for years, Calabria, Italy for uh, casting spells. So I'm gonna put these seeds in here and uh, they didn't have very many, um, they didn't have very many uh, seeds in them. I bought like 30 fruit and they, they were expensive. And I got them from California and they were industrially grown uh, I couldn't find any organic source for them. I'm highly sensitive to agrochemicals and I developed a rash on my face just from drinking a little tiny bit of this citrus uh, from industrially grown farms. Some people are more sensitive to, to chemicals than other people. I'm one of those people that is highly affected by um, farm chemicals and um, I uh, got really sick when I went on vacation. I eat a totally clean, all organic diet. Uh, you have to eat organic. It's a problem with a lot of these uh, medical uh, places. They don't ever mention organic. They just say eat vegan, but they don't say organic. And not all organic is, is good because if you're using organic and you're growing in, in plastic, with plastic mulch, which they all show in their healthy, you know, vegan videos of plastic mulch, you're like, that's not healthy. It's sure it's better than plastic mulch with uh, farm chemicals, 
but it's not as healthy as without plastic mulch. Uh, we need to go back to the basics. So use hay for, for uh, mulch rather than plastic because that feeds the biology. So you want to feed your biology for optimal soil health. And to do that, you apply probiotics with prebiotics. So you apply some carbon source like hay. I found hay to be the best. This is more of our citrus, no greening whatsoever. Um, Uh, I'm going to go over here. Bananas are looking quite swell. I love how they make uh, change the whole look of the place. So you have to apply uh, probiotic with prebiotic, prebiotic with probiotic. So the prebiotic is the hay, and then the probiotic is the biology, so a manure. I found manure. This is a banana I just did. I chopped the tops of the leaves off. I could do 10 of these in a half hour, 35 minutes. I timed myself. Uh, divides and plant plant and uh, uh, there's one I'm gonna do that little tiny one um, plant and or dig up and plant in 35 minutes 10 of them uh, a lot of people have issues planting bananas but I've done so many of them this is a peach cobbler tree it's looking quite good uh, it's starting to bloom this is a fruit punch tree some creature uh, broke the branch off here but it's recovering uh, this is a, a orange sherbet tree that's not just now starting to push. Um, I'm surprised that a guanabana tree has not lost all its leaves. That's the first year it hasn't done that. This is the only Ingospectabilis tree uh, that's that's not the same age as the rest. And it's not blooming. Uh, it was a horrible compacted spot. All of my Ingospectabilis trees are blooming at the moment. Um, this is another orange sherbet tree. This is a all summer mango tree. There's Miko lemons, Miko lemons. There's a Miko lemon. There's a black sapote. There's a cashew. There's one of those little um, sapodillas I just planted. Um, and then, you know, bananas and uh, black sapote and citrus. And there's some uh, big buttercream mango there. There's a mango that froze. This is a mango that froze. This is a mango that froze. I do not include those frozen mangoes in my uh, count of 250 grafted trees. I kind of just wrote them off, though some of them are blooming quite nicely. So um, this is one that froze. It's getting quite big. Uh, this is one that froze. It's still small. Uh, but I think we fixed this is a, a sugarloaf mango that's you could tell the trees here are very small. This was a very compacted area, even though it's still good. There's got to be a compaction layer in there. I need to put some bananas in here. Dig up the soil a little bit and put some bananas in there. Because um, if you have that compaction layer still, it's just really not helping things. And a sure way to see, if you have all that stuff growing good like this and stuff's still growing slow, it is because of compaction. All of our problems here have been from compaction. Compaction prevents the uh, the uh, infusion of water, if you can't get water to move through your system from compaction, you can't get nutrients to move through your system. If you can't get water to move through your system, you can't get biology to move through your system. Um, biology will help it eventually, but it just takes so long. But if you plant a lot of trees into the system and... Um, there's an Acha Chiro. Plant a lot of trees into the system, uh, that fixes it too. So, especially in combination with diversity. There's a chiro, there's a bread nut tree, uh, there's a acha chiro. So, you do diversity uh, in combination with a lot of bananas. A lot of bananas really help a system because they're so full of water. They're like pumps for the soil. So, they excrete so much exudates um, through their uh, roots that the biology just swarms to them. And it's a home for bio biology and uh, fungi especially. There's that mango that uh, is uh, blooming and has fruit on it and it's in a lot of shade. This is a male MB tree. That's a, a hermaphrodite MB tree, or, you know, the perfect flower. That's a fruiting jackfruit. That's a fruiting jackfruit. They have fruit on them right now. Um, this is a grafted one. The other one is a seedling. Then I have different stuff in here. I'm trying to get more bananas in here. That's one that I just put in here. 
I have a lots of Luke's Garcinias, like a hundred. They're varying sizes. Some are large, some are small, some are tiny. Um, but they are kind of pulling themselves up. These seeds came directly from Luke, so I know what they are. I originally bought seeds and somebody sold me uh, in beef, male and beef uh, fruit uh, trees uh, when I didn't know what the, they look like. <laughs> And then I got seeds uh, that never germinated from another source. So I've got a behind on my Garcinia uh, Mexicana or Luke's Garcinia uh, because of that. But we're, we'll get up we'll get up to par. I'm not worried about it. I can wait. Everything's doing good. I don't have to worry about anything dying. I don't have to worry about fertilizing anything. I don't have to worry about watering anything. It removes so much stress when you grow naturally uh, from the equation, which... Um, uh, I don't understand why it's so hard for people to realize that trees don't need us to grow. They need us to remove ourselves from the system, which is what we do. It's one of our core ba uh, factors in our farm management, so we don't walk on anything. These are some uh, Trinitora cacao with Luke's. They're doing good. I have one Trinitoro that fruited or flowered this year, so next year, this time next year, we should have Trinitoro and a uh, yellow rib cacao. Uh, it took me a while to really feel sure that I knew what I was doing with cacao, but I've got it down now. I can plant trees and I know they're not going to die. That's one from my friend Tim who gave me a bunch during the drought a year ago uh, in winter. Was it a year ago? Yeah, the winter drought a year ago. Uh, and it was a winter drought that had been followed by a horrible summer drought, which we'd never had before. So it was really dry and I just assumed that cacao would die, but it didn't. It didn't need water. There's a cacao right here I see. Um, there's one. This is a banana I just planted. Uh, everything's looking good. There's a great big achachiro there. There's another achachiro here. <laughs> There's a big cashew seedling. There's a citrus seedling. There's a mango seedling. I think we probably have about 200 uh, mango seedlings now. There's another star apple tree covered in fruit. There's a, a cashew tree. So I harvested bananas yesterday. I harvested uh, black sapotes yesterday. I harvested uh, star fruit yesterday and I harvested passion fruit yesterday Lots of it. So here's another inga tree. So these ingas are the same age. This one's tiny You think it'd be the exact same size. This one's tiny. This one's big. It just doesn't make any sense uh, It's spot to spot. It's tree to tree. All trees are different uh, like people um, They're different I found and it's just spot to spot, tree to tree. Um, eventually they all uh, seem to, this is a pomelo that looks good. Uh, there's another star fruit that has fruit on it. The star fruit produce year round. I'm not a big fan of star fruit. Uh, there's a, a, a citrus, there's a citrus. Got a lot of different Garcinias in here. There's some Dolces, there's some, I'll go over here. There's some uh, Garcinia Acuminata in here. Um, trying to see, there's the Garcinia Acuminata, right there, yep. and here's the Garcinia Dulcis, it looks really nice. This is a, a Rangapuri Lime, no greening, greening is management, totally management caused by mutated genes from pollution, from ag chemicals. This is a, a Chachira tree. I got a lot of different size encephalardos through here. This is a Quimac tree that fruits. This is a, a Inga fuilii tree that's got had flowers on it, but it doesn't now. It's got this uh, Benisteriopsis capi tree growing in there. Not exactly the best thing. This is a uh, a star apple. This is a uh, a uh, abu tree, Puteria camito. Um, there's a, a Oscar's giant purple star apple grown from seed. They're grown from seed. We're gonna get uh, our star apples. This inga tree is the same size as those other two. It's huge. <clears throat> it's got flowers all over it. Um, 
I've got some uh, Garcinia dolces growing at the base of it right there. And I got this uh, Philodendron Jose Buono uh, top cutting growing there. Uh, I'm obsessed with aeroids, rare aeroids. So there's the flowers that hasn't opened on the, uh, 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 the Abu, I mean the uh, Ingus Pictavulus. And this tree is the same age as that tree. And then I have a citron and there's a blood orange over there that did have a uh, greening that's overcome it. And I got a bunch of cacao planted in there that are doing good. This is the, probably one of the rarest star apples there is. And it's uh, finally getting some size. This one right here, this is a DPI gold or a Philippine gold. Uh, I need to divide this banana off here. Uh, this is the Oscar's giant purple star apple. It looks so good this year. Uh, this was like one of the worst compacted spots in our yard. This is a black sapote tree that, you know, it has uh, fruit on it that I got yesterday. There's still some more on there. Uh, not a lot, but there's a sapodilla tree that I used to think was the best sapodilla I ever had until I tasted my friend Frank's sapodilla. Uh, giant sapodilla that tasted so good. It was on par with the best cherimoyas I've ever had. Crunchy and... Um, had some uh, grit to it, which I like, and it was just delicious. Oh. So he gave me some seedlings of it. This one I thought was the best. It's got fruit. So this is that uh, Inga tree. This is the Juicy Pearl Star Apple from Australia, the Argentium irratum, uh, Chrysophyllum Argentium irratum, subspecies. Uh, I saw Bellamy was selling the same species. It's not the same as what they had showing. Uh, this is a white star fruit called Juicy Pearl. This is a, a fruiting uh, achachuro tree uh, I gave a lot of manure to. This is a coconuts. A lot of this stuff we were not supposed to be able to grow here, like the cacao and uh, the uh, star fruit and the abu. And um, I found that that's just not true. Uh, I've been growing cacao successfully and fruiting it continuously for 12 years. So uh, it is possible. And uh, our cacao held fruit down to 31 degrees and never dropped it and held it to maturity after the 31 degree freeze. So uh, it is uh, your soil that determines uh, your plant's outcome. And uh, if you're applying uh, uh, fertilizers, uh, salt-based fertilizers, probably your tree couldn't handle 31 degrees. If you're growing it in plastic pots, probably your tree couldn't handle 31 degrees. If you're using copper fungicides on your mangoes, probably your fruit, this is a fruit pot or a, uh, a uh, sugarloaf mango. This is a uh, Venus mango. Oh, I don't know, this rain has been like not good for mangoes. This is a, a uh, a uh, sweet tart mango. This is the uh, Thai giant uh, alocasia. There's a uh, Nocleolatifolia. In some of my videos, I said Nocleolatifolia contained um, uh, tramadol. That's not the case. That was a mistake done on the study that said that, and they rectified it. That's why I don't understand why these colleges aren't coming out with disclaimers and new data on their recommendations. Uh, they just double down on stupid and uh, pass that on to us. And that's why we can't move away from destroying Florida with nutrients. Uh, it's not needed. I, I mean, we I can grow all this stuff. This is Moringa. Uh, there's that uh, Nocle latifolia. This is, I thought this little plant died. This is my uh, Calathea lutea. Uh, the rabbits ate. It was a lot bigger, and I thought it would die. But when the the uh, <clears throat> turmeric call died around it for the winter, this is a seed-grown uh, uh, coconut from uh, my friend Tim that he collected from the beach, and I planted there. This is my vegetable garden. I planted some vegetables in here, some seeds. I could see the little seeds, but the armadillos got in here and wreaked havoc. But uh, they got my. Uh, Somebody ate all my gourds, but I have some that are making it. Uh, they're getting kind of big. They're not gourds. These are uh, butternut squash. 
Um, I don't water my vegetables. I like to practice growing vegetables. You don't have to water anything. That's what that patch is. Uh, I could have done a better job. Uh, I'm just not uh, as enamored with growing vegetables as I am with uh, uh, tropical fruit trees. This is a diamond mango. I think diamonds, if I had to choose between diamond and pickering, I would definitely choose diamond. Uh, it's just been my experience. Uh, but they have a different flavor when you're not using chemicals than they do when you use chemicals. Our mangoes are superior to any other mangoes I've ever eaten anywhere. Um, and people have told me that, that come down from Miami and don't even come here to buy mangoes. And I say, you sure you don't want to taste? And they taste our mangoes. And they're like, oh my God, do you have any of these for sale? I said, sorry, I didn't save any because you said you weren't into the mangoes. I just assumed you had mangoes, but not all mangoes are the same. This is a jackfruit tree that's like producing really well. This is another Inga Vera. This is the Inga Vera tree. It's supposed to be not the best Inga. This is a sugar apple tree. I have some, uh, I have some uh, Ross Sapotes and some Sapodillas. And there's a fruit punch. There's a, a, a a sugar apple, or no, a, a, a <laughs> sugar loaf mango that's a big fruiting uh, uh, MB, or a quimuck tree that uh, is like a grafted tree from Excalibur. That's a peach cobbler. That's a pineapple pleasure mango. It's a Venus mango. There's another Ross Sapote. They don't really look too good. I'm not sure what that's about, but um, I don't know if they like that much rain. Um, I'm not sure. But we got egg fruit off our trees this year. Uh, they haven't been the same since we got 31 degrees. Okay, I gotta move. That's a male MB tree. Uh, there's a Santal tree. Here's a lychee tree that's starting to bloom. There's a all summer mango. Uh, here's a sugarloaf mango that's, you know, starting. Here's a lychee. Lychee trees aren't as big as they are over by the cows because I haven't given them as much uh, compost, uh, daily manure. I believe the raw manure is better, superior to any compost that anybody can make. Uh, maybe not any compost, maybe if you mix different compost together, but I still don't think, maybe if you have compost and you mix fresh raw zebu manure, that could be superior. Yes, I would agree with that. But to say that you can make a better product than uh, what nature uh, makes is what's wrong with our agricultural systems because we think that we know better. And in turn, we have uh, highly je de jeopardized our, our health here in the U.S. It's a big fruiting cashew tree. So this tree, I got like all that that uh, those little seedlings came from, and it's got flowers all over. I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, we'll have fruit uh, as soon as uh, the weather stays warm. It's been okay. Here's a Valkyrie tree. This is a Miko lemon tree. We don't get greening on our on our citrus. Uh, here's a Miko lemon. Here's a, 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 a lychee tree. Here's a lychee. I hope this uh, video can hold up. I'm gonna try to move quick so that I can just make it in one. There's a flowering lychee. There's a flowering lychee. There's a flowering lychee. Here's a cashew seedling. There's a cashew seedling. Here's a buttercream mango that's just starting. Buttercream has been a mango. This is a buttercream that froze, but it's doing good. That's a lemon zest mango. That's a diamond mango. So diamond, the reason why I think it's better is because diamond has produced three crops for us. The flavor is on par with the pickering. Um, maybe not the same. There's a, a cashew seedling I see in there that I hadn't seen before. I saw another one around here, right here. They're everywhere. The cashews are coming up. They show a little cold tolerance, the spots on the leaves. That's a mango that froze, but um, once they get a certain size, they're unaffected. And uh, if they die from frost, they will come back once they're that size. So um, it might take a couple of years, but eventually they will do good. And if you give them a big pile of manure or daily compost, as I call it, um, then they will grow uh, 10 times as fast as a cotton candy mango, uh, cotton candy mango, cotton candy mango, uh, sweet tart mango. 
So this uh, buttercream tree uh, produced the fruit all the way into October. So th we got three crops off this little tiny tree and then it bloomed in November. That's what that old flower is there. Um, so uh, 14 months straight, it's been in flower or fruit production. I didn't even know that was possible in Florida, especially on a buttercream. This is a sweet tart tree. It's just starting. That's a sweet tart. That's a sweet tart. That's a sweet tart. We have about 30 sweet tart trees. How's, this is my uh, miniature zebu pastures. Here they are. Hey, you guys. You gonna come up here and say hi? There's a sweet tart tree. God, it wouldn't be the same if I didn't show the miniature zebus. Come here, Wally. There you are. There's Wally. That's our bull. And those are the cows back there. Hi, Wally. How are you? He's four years old. He's 32 inches tall, as sweet as can be. He's red and black and white. Um, I think he's half, he's out of uh, Rick Bogle's cow, Amber. And this is our cow, Carnation. That's his son, Romeo. He's over a year old. That's his mother, Pepsi, back there. She's my favorite little darling. Hi, Carnation. How are you? She's about 36 inches. She, he's a little tiny guy. He's going to mature at like 31, I think, probably. He's a little older than his daddy. Pepsi's 33 inches, and Luna, the white-faced cow, uh, they all came from Rick Bogle, and she's, uh, uh, she's 36 inches, 37 inches, maybe. There's Romy. Hi, Romy. They're very sweet. I love them. They're the best thing that ever happened to me animal-wise. They're just amazing. Sweet tart trees. They're just amazing. So one thing I do pull up, I pull up pepper trees. I don't like them. Of course, I broke the root off that, so that wasn't smart. There's a sweet tart tree. There's a seedling mango. There's a, a, a fruit punch tree that's blooming. And then there's little seedlings here. There's another cashew. So I planted back here lots of seeds, direct sown seeds. I did citrus. I did cashews, 200 cashews. I did, um, uh, that's a, a, a grafted jackfruit tree that's quite tiny that has fruit on it. Um, quite tiny. That's a double fruit there. Uh, it's fruiting all over. It's just like, I put daily manure on it. That's what does it. The miniature zebu manure makes stuff fruit. When you have healthy soil, uh, it, it allows the plant's uh, genotype to be expressed in a, in a uh, good fashion. So uh, the, environment that, uh, the environment that you put your tree and you grow your tree in does affect your uh, tree's health and its ability to uh, get hormone production and plant growth promoting uh, enzymes and... Um, uh, nitrogen fixation to happen. There's a cashew seedling. There's a uh, fruit punch mango. There's a fruit punch mango. This is a, yeah, it's just starting to push. Uh, this one's pushing or flowering and pushing. Uh, there's a, a fruit punch. It's got flowers on it. That one's got flowers on it. This is a Valkyrie mango. Uh, I don't see it uh, flowering. So. Here's uh, our daily manure with fung fungi growing in it. Valkyrie mangoes, Valkyrie mangoes. Um, so I planted uh, cashews, I planted mangoes back here. I planted imbi, I see a uh, pepper tree I need to pull up. I planted um, Garcinia livingstonii. I planted achachiro back here direct sown, but it's very hard to see them when you have this robust orchard floor. Um, this used to be a horse pasture for 50 years, so the soil was heavily compacted, um, but now the soil is like really, this is a seedling mango that's doing really good. Um, <clears throat> now there's, you know, stuff starting to pop up in here uh, above the orchard floor, the, co the cover, the the cover below ground is the home for the microbiology that's going to uh, uh, fixate nitrogen and be the endophytes in your uh, fruit. So if your fruit doesn't have endophytes, there's chances are it doesn't have the vitamins and mineral content as a, a uh, 
a, tr uh, a tree that has the biology growing inside it because the trees get their enzymes from the biology. <clears throat> the nutrients are the bacteria that are inside the tree that are provided by the fungi. So it's all connected. So if you have a dead soil like they have in citrus, this is a ice cream mango. This uh, ice cream's produced three crops here. That's an ice cream. Um, there's another ice cream. There's a, a pina colada. Here's a Valencia Pride. There's a Valencia Pride. This is a Valencia Pride that froze. Now, why would these not freeze and this one froze? Uh, I think the soil decides when it's under too much stress what plants are going to get shut off from uh, water or what's, what they're going to slow down in order to keep the water pressure up in the trees that are survived. The, the, what is it, glycolysis for... Uh, for uh, or glycol? Anyway, not glycolysis, that's a <laughs> reduction mechanism. Uh, this is a carry trees. Yeah, I don't want to think today. Try not to think too much. Sometimes I have to give my brain a rest. <clears throat> and that's what I was looking forward to on this monthly farm update. Uh, just kind of trying to look at the uh, the plant. So there's some cashews in here over there. There's a big one over there. There's a big one there. And I know there's others in here and I'm I'm positive all the uh, Garcinias are popping up. I just can't really see them on the fly here. Um, but this, you know, the horses did stand back here and, and the soil was compacted. Here's a citrus that I direct sowed. Or no, that's a, a Garcinia. So they are coming up. And probably a Garcinia Intermedia. I planted Garcinia Intermedia trees back here. So they are, uh, the stuff is cu coming up. It's just, uh, this is furthest away from my house. And um, I made the choice to just do uh, seeds back here with my grafted mango trees. And I want to get up to, uh, there's a cashew right here. I want to get up to uh, 500 or 800 bananas. So the next 400 after I get to 500 are gonna be in the back. There's two cashews here, are gonna be in the back. And once you start putting the bananas in, it really changes the look of the system and the health of the system. Everything helps. There's a little mango uh, seedling. So far the video is holding up. Get through this. We've had so much rain, I've said that, but I mean, it's unusual to have this much rain this late in the year. In fact, there's rain on this mowed path. So the mowed path gets compacted and there isn't any standing water next to it. But where you mow, you have standing water. Um, but in fact, the soil is higher where you don't mow. So there's none there, but there is here. Uh, there's a lemon zest tree. This is a pickering tree. And we got so much rain yesterday, four inches. Um, I imagine this will all dry up today unless we get a bunch more rain. It's been raining every day. This is a juicy pearl tree. I would have thought that it would have uh, fruit on it now, but uh, this tree had never flowered before until I mowed the path in here and got some manure on it. I'm trying to look for uh, cashews while I walk through here, but I don't see any. Um, there's a fruit punch tree. This is a cotton candy tree. Uh, here's our other pond that normally this time of year would, so this is what happens. The neighbors did fill on their property and made their property three feet above our property when they built the house next door. And then they put fill three feet high in their horse pasture. Well, look what their horse pasture looks like now, mowing it. It's lower than this. And it's like a giant lake. That was three feet above this. So they have all that standing water because of management from mowing. And yet I'm the problem because I focus on uh, soil health and let all these weeds grow, which prevent that. That's how this place used to look when I mowed. That's why I stopped doesn't make any sense. We're the only property around here that doesn't have any standing water. Look at how full that pond is. Yes, I'm glad I came over here. Hi, little ponies. Oh, I love <laughs> ponies and horses. I had horses all my life until the last 
few years now. I just have some donkey ladies. I love them. Anyway, so they made that property three feet above ours. Now it's lower than ours. But they mow like every week. There's no grass in there and then it has horses on it. So, <clears throat> but, and they spray glyphosate. So I did see mangoes through here before. There's one. Wow, that looks healthy. Those leaves are almost black. Um, so there are little seedlings popping up. Uh, it's just, yeah, this house they built after we put our house in there. And they, that property used to be uh, five feet above ours because they did the, the soil right up against the property line. And now it's almost uh, the same height as this. <sighs> what happens when you drive on sand? There's a, uh, what is this? Uh, that's a, 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 a uh, not a relinia, heliconia. This is a fruit punch. Trying to look while I walk to see if I see any cashews, because I have seen cashews through here before. This pepper tree I didn't get to pull up. That pepper tree I didn't get to pull up. Now they're too big. I need to uh, get rid of them. That looks like a, almost like a coconut cream. I'm not sure what it is, because it had not never fruited before. The bananas are finally looking good. So I know it's the, the soil that is the epigenetic changes happen to when you add diversity into it because I put bananas back here and those bananas should be huge. But because I haven't been planting bananas back here in a long time, you know, like I have in the front, there's no memory in the soil of ban bananas growing in there. So there's no soil aggregates with bits and pieces of the banana DNA in the soil or bits and pieces of plant beneficial, banana beneficial bacteria in the aggregates or uh, plant uh, banana beneficial enzymes in the aggregates. So uh, the biology hasn't been built up for the bananas back here. And so that's why it's important to keep adding more and more trees of different types to the system. It might take a while before your soils uh, change uh, and become uh, 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 growth promoting soils for the type of tree you're planting in it. Yeah, our soils were not always the best for growing achachiros. Achachiro, this is a, a sweet tart tree. This is a fruit punch tree. They're starting to push. Uh, there's a little cashew. Uh, there's that lemon zest tree. So this lemon zest tree has never produced any fruit. It's produced fruit, but it's always dropped it. And yet the one in the front has produced three crops for us. So. They both get the same thing. It's just, uh, I don't find lemon zest to be that good of a mango. I'm kind of surprised. It's, it's a, uh, most people's top mango. I put it on par with Val Kerry with, or Florigon. Those are all three that I, I, I put about the same level. Um, uh, there's Kerry trees. Here's some bananas. These are starting to do good. So I need to divide these bananas and move them. Uh, this is an ice cream tree. It's starting to push. There's a cog shawl. I don't like cog shawls. Somebody recommend that I uh, I graft uh, the uh, uh, varieties I like onto the tree. I'm not a big on grafting. I just don't feel the need. I have 250 grafted mango trees and I want to cross all these varieties, inter intercross them and get new species uh, or new, new varieties, not species. This carry tree has got... Uh, had fruit on it. I'm trying to see if I see any now, but uh, a problem with rain and little tiny mango fruit. Uh, it's like the arch enemy of, there's one. Camera's not operating. Anyway, there is some fruit. Um, there's an ice cream tree. We're going to get fruit. There's just so much bloom. We're going to have lots of fruit this year. It's going to be a really good mango year. I could tell. Um, it's a, uh, a cotton candy tree. This is a cotton candy tree. They're blooming. Cotton candy tree. Here's a priestly Atamoya tree. I love how Atamoyas don't lose their leaves, but the sugar apples do. Atamoyas are perfect. Uh, much superior fruit than sugar apple. Uh, Atamoyas don't seem to get the anthracnose that they, uh, the uh, nursery grown sugar apple trees. I believe that the nursery grown sugar apple trees that get anthracnose is due to 
the same thing that affects the citrus. So they've been grown using chemicals for so long that they've done mutagenic changes to the mitochondria that uh, makes them susceptible to uh, disease. Because I know that my uh, seedling uh, fruit grown in uh, healthy soil don't seem to have the same issues as their parents. And probably if I had grown the seedlings from the parents in uh, uh, industrial fashion, then um, those seedlings too, there's a cashew that's big seedling. It's close to the cow pasture. They're, you know, uh, major magnesium uh, super accumulators. They like lots of magnesium. Animal uh, manure has high magnesium, so uh, that's why they do so well. And they don't even have to water them. So yeah, the uh, mutagenic changes uh, in it when you, uh, when you uh, inflict uh, industrial farm practices onto those children of the the mutated genes uh, from the sugar apples, then those children uh, probably would uh, not be as uh, uh, would not be able to uh, turn uh, plant uh, anthracnose into a plant beneficial anthracnose with the help of the fungi in the soil. It all comes down to management practice. <clears throat> we have to start looking at it. The information's out there. I think that the information has been out there for a long time. These uh, agrochemicals change, um, uh, make mutations in uh, mitochondria, but because of the amount of money that they can make from providing products that they say is the answer, yeah, they might work temporarily, but they just disguise the 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 problem, which is uh, mitochondria damage, and so your tree eventually succumbs or uh, uh, dies early. So y your adaptive response to uh, your industrial farming is citrus that dies after 15 years when it should be living 75 to 100. If you're eating that fruit, chances are that's going to uh, uh, harm you too. So this is that lemon zest tree that produced three crops for us, uh, three separate crops. I almost made it on the video. Mm -hmm. Almost done here. There's a lychee tree that's flowering. I love lychees, one of my favorite fruit. There's a sugarloaf mango. There's a lychee. There's a Miko lemon. There's a Miko lemon. Uh, they're younger, they're all different ages. We're on our second generation. This is a sweet tart tree that for some, oh, it is starting to push. Um, there you go. Uh, great. Here's a jackfruit J31 grafted tree that uh, is finally uh, fruiting. Uh, I see that big flower didn't make it, but it's got more on there. It's got some up here, so we're going to have fruit. Uh, it just keeps trying until it sets, but it is middle of winter, so um, there's a. This was so areas where the soil was heavily compacted, hence the sugar, uh, the uh, lychee trees, the Miko lemons. Uh, the mangoes, everything's smaller. Um, I did chop and drop. I did multiple inputs. Everything I did back there, I did here twice as much. Uh, I don't think I remembered to plant the biodynamic horns here. Maybe I need to make some more. That's a BD500 that I only inoculate for like two weeks. I don't follow the rules set by other regenerative farm things, their dogma. So rather than bury the horn from lactating cows for six months in the ground, I will inoculate it in like two weeks. Uh, surely the biology can move in there within two weeks and then rebury it in this area. So I'm going to do that. There's a little cashew there and I just need to do that. I'm getting ready to start planting bananas in here. Um, I have planted bananas in here and they didn't grow, but I didn't do very many. I only did one or two and I realized now that I needed to do like 30. There's another cashew growing in here. There's a seed mango. There's a seed mango. There's a Miko lemon. Here's one of those stunted uh, lychee trees. And look at the soil diversity. The It's just six, it's not even six inches. It's four inch grass growing in there. And the bananas is the same thumb. It's compaction. That's what it is. Totally compaction. <clears throat> There's a, a, a cashew that looks like it's uh, thriving. And then it starts getting better. So there's a lychee that's a little bit bigger that has flowers on it just starting. There's a lychee back there. 
<clears throat> there's a Miko lemon. Now it starts getting good again. I have more diversity up here. Lychees. There's some Eki in here. Uh, I have a big uh, guava, seed-grown seed guava that I see is over there beyond that banana, like right there. And then I started putting bananas in here. There's a achachiro, there's a miko lemon. <clears throat> I wanted to go look at that big uh, Luke's Garcinia, but I think the video needs to wind down, so I'm not gonna do that in this video to see if it had flowers on it. Uh, everything's starting to do good in here. Everything, I got lots of bananas planted through here finally. Um, bananas just make the system look uh, Full. It just really, they complement how it looks, <clears throat> for sure. This was the area that was much like the area back there with the compacted soil. Uh, the compacted soil was killing, because this was lawn for 55 years, and it was killing the giant live oak trees, or uh, laurel oaks, rather. Uh, I consider them a type of live oak. Um, and this area was like the area back there where the grass just isn't growing, but I have added more plants. So this has mangoes, it has cashews, it has more bananas, and it has cassava, cassava, pigeon pea, pigeon pea. So it is starting to look better. The cashews are doing good. Cashew, cashew, bananas, and mulberries, and um, Luke's Garcinias. <clears throat> and uh, Apuntia I see in there. Arr. Here's a little Luke's Garcinia. Not the biggest, but they're they're like coming on. We don't rush anybody. We just try to keep calm and steady. Eventually we'll get there. It's getting there. It's been eight years. It's been an eight year project. And what I imagine it would be at the beginning is not what it's turned into. So originally it was just gonna be achachiros and rolinias. I wasn't even planting mangoes. And then we evolved and now it's like cashews, cacao, uh, different garcinias, jackfruit, mangoes, egg fruit. This is a little seedling from our tree. It had chlorotic looking leaves. Um, there's a, a, a world's best. So this is a world's best cutting from a tree from, well, it's not world's best, it's Adam's version of world's best. And this, this, the trees just don't do good generation to generation. That's a cutting that's two years old that still is stunted from mutagenic changes from growing in peat and holytone. Sorry, it's a bad way to grow. This is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and this is Florida Natural Farm and I hope you have an excellent day. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment if you enjoyed this content. I really like reading people's comments. And thanks for watching. Thank you.